The stage was set for the Lok Sabha elections after the assassination of Indira Gandhi on the 31st of October 1984. I, Rajiv Gandhi, do solemnly affirm that I will work. Her son, Rajiv, sworn in as Prime Minister within hours of her death, had recommended immediate elections. The polls were fought in the memory and martyrdom of Indira. The elections generated a massive sympathy wave for the Congress. Playing on the insecurity of the people arising out of terrorism and secessionism, the party returned to power with a landslide victory. It won 415 seats of a total of 543. Opposition stalwarts like Atal Bihari Vajpayee, Chandra Shekhar, Echin Bahuguna and George Fernandez were crushed. The Bharatiya Janta Party won just two seats. Rajiv Gandhi was barely 40. He was handsome and had a clean personal and political image. He was non-controversial. An airline pilot, he had been reluctant to join politics. But after the death of his younger brother Sanjay in a plane crash, he was persuaded to join his mother on the political stage. In 1981, he was elected to the Lok Sabha from Amethi in Uttar Pradesh. When Rajiv took over the reins, India was deeply wounded by the assassination of a sitting Prime Minister. It was the first such incident in India and it was followed by the worst communal flare-up since partition. The country was also facing a challenging secessionist movement in Punjab. Then, in the midst of the election campaign, India was hit by a terrible industrial disaster. In the VRs on the 3rd of December, a poisonous gas leak from a factory owned by American multinational Union Carbide killed 2,000 people in Bhopal. The health of thousands of others was permanently damaged. After the Congress swept back to power, Rajiv started well. He wanted clean and transparent governance and had a forward-looking attitude. His most challenging task was to find a solution to the Punjab crisis that had led to the assassination of his mother. In July 1985, Rajiv signed the Punjab Accord with Akali Dal President Sant Harchan Singh Longowal. The deal transferred the Union Territory of Chandigarh to Punjab, a fair share of water to the state and the promise to look into the demand for autonomy. Akali Dal leaders were released from jail and state elections were announced. In the midst of this election campaign, Longowal was assassinated by terrorists. But the elections were not called off and the Akali Dal won with an absolute majority. Pushing for reconciliation and peace, Rajiv also signed agreements with the All Assam Student Union in Assam and the Mizo National Front in Mizoram. After elections were held in Assam in 1985, the Assam Ganaparishad came to power defeating the Congress and in Mizoram, the Mizo National Front rebels led by Lal Denga emerged victorious in 1986. In all three states, Punjab, Assam and Mizoram, Rajiv had risen above party interests to settle festering problems at the cost of the Congress's electoral fortunes. This worked to his advantage and proved his good intentions. जैसे मैं आपके सामने खड़ा हूँ, मेरा ध्यान हमारी आजादी की लड़ाई पर जाता है। Rajiv impressed the politically cynical middle class with a speech at the December 1985 Congress centenary celebrations in Mumbai. Is this the India for which Mahatma Gandhi and Indira Gandhi sacrificed their lives? He attacked the brokers of power, who he said had converted the Congress into a feudal oligarchy. He vowed to break the nexus between political parties and vested interests. But his promise didn't translate into any meaningful changes within the party. However, 
one of the path-breaking decisions his government made was to pass the anti-defection law. Its goal was to prevent elected legislators from changing party affiliations, often enticed by money and power. Rajiv was increasingly seen as Mr. Clean for his efforts to bring about political reforms. But the good days didn't last long. In April 1985, the Supreme Court's judgment ordering the husband of a divorced woman, Shah Bano, to pay her maintenance angered Muslim clerics and conservatives. They viewed the judgment as interfering with their personal law. Arif Mohammad Khan, a minister in the government, defended the court verdict in parliament. But under pressure from Muslim fundamentalists, Rajiv did an about turn and the government passed the Muslim Women's Bill to overturn the court judgment. Around the same time, a local court in Faisabad in Uttar Pradesh ordered that the locks of the Babri Masjid in Ayodhya be opened. It is widely believed that the order was passed at the insistence of the centre to pacify Hindu fundamentalists and to balance the Muslim appeasement in the Shahabano case. From here on, it was a political downhill journey for Rajiv. His pioneering attempts at modernization through technology missions and the introduction of computers and reservation of seats for women in village panchayats failed to bolster his sagging political image. In 1987, V.P. Singh, then Defence Minister, resigned from the government, accusing Rajiv of corruption in the purchase of Bofors guns from Sweden. Leading a popular movement, Singh became a catalyst for uniting the opposition parties against Rajiv. Rajiv lost the 1989 Lok Sabha elections and it was a huge blow for the Congress. It won only 197 seats, that is a whopping 218 less than its previous tally. The country had a new government, a coalition led by VP Singh. On the 21st of May 1991, Rajiv was killed in Tamil Nadu in a suicide bomb attack by the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam, or LTTE, a Sri Lankan terrorist organization. It was a revenge killing as the Indian government under Rajiv had sent peacekeeping forces to Sri Lanka to end a civil war between the LTTE and the military. Looking back, Experts believe Rajiv seemed politically naive. He squandered his massive 1984 mandate by pandering to Hindu and Muslim fundamentalism and compromising with political corruption. But even though that might have been the case, Rajiv Gandhi's stint as Prime Minister marked a turning point. He goes down in history as a reformist, a forward-looking leader who promised to prepare India for the 21st century. In this, he succeeded a great deal.